Welcome. Thank you so much for joining the Fostering Success Michigan webinar series, Getting to Know FSM Higher Education Consortium. This webinar series is highlighting programs uh, who are engaged in our campus-based support work for students with experience in foster care through our FSM Higher Education Consortium. My name is Maddie Day. I'm the Director of Outreach and Training with the Center for Fostering Success at Western Michigan University. In my role, I oversee the Fostering Success Michigan statewide initiative. A few items to know, um, all attendees will be in listen-only mode. If you have any technical difficulties, you can contact the Citrix team at the number that you see on your screen. And of course, all recordings will be available um, following the webinar on our resource library on our fosteringsuccessmichigan.com website. We'd like to say a special thank you to our funders, the Kresge Foundation, the Havermill Foundation, and Western Michigan University for their generous support of the Fostering Success Michigan statewide initiative. These webinar, the, this webinar series is focused on highlighting elements of support from our various campuses engaged in the FSM Higher Education Consortium. We currently have seven campus-based support programs. You can see their lovely logos there. All programs include a designated campus coach providing 24-7 life skills coaching, mentorship opportunities, peer community building opportunities, connection to a network of campus champions and advocates, advocacy for students on campus and in the community, pre-college outreach and recruitment, and financial resources. There is an asterisk with financial resources because it's very important for folks to know that while each of the programs have some element of financial support that is available, that financial resource will look different for each program. So we highly encourage you to do some research continue to look into the campus-based support programs that you're interested and learn about the, camp the financial resources that they may offer. We will have some opportunity in this broadcast to highlight some of the financial resources unique to this campus-based support program, but again, we just want to remind everybody to make sure to look at the financial resources of every program. Today, we are featuring Empowering My Success program at the University of Michigan Flint. And I would like to say a special thank you to Kayla for joining us. Um, Kayla is the life skills coach heading up the Empowering My Success program at University of Michigan Flint. Hi Kayla, how are you doing? Good, Maddie, how are you? Great, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, um, it's wonderful. Us. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you on, and I really appreciate you taking time uh, just, you know, to, to hear about the program and um, to share some of the unique aspects of the program that students, professional adults, um, or students, professionals, and supportive adults will be interested in learning about as they're considering their college options. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So let's just jump right in. Um, on the screen, we have some of the program eligibility requirements, and I think it's really important to hear from the campus coaches um, and the folks representing the programs um, really about what this means and how they are able to support students with experience in foster care, both um, through the Empowering My Success program, but also um, students who are attending U of M Flint um, that may be beyond the uh, program eligibility requirements. So if you could speak a little bit to that, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for going over some of the general requirements in terms of eligibility because as most of you already know, if you've already listened to some of the other webinars, we do have similar eligibility criteria through our grant. However, um, I always like to include that part of our eligibility is just that a student is admitted to U of M Flint and that language is really important because being admitted to U of M Flint doesn't mean that you need to have started taking classes already. Um, you could be admitted while you're still a senior and once you're admitted, you've met all the eligibility criteria that you need for us to serve you through our grant, we can actually assist that student even while they're still in high school, ease that transition into college, help provide them with emergency funds if they need it, um, and just help with that tr transition into college instead of starting once they're already here. So in addition to those criteria um, that you see on the screen, I definitely like to point that out. Um, I also like to point out that, like Maddie said, even if students don't necessarily meet this criteria for whatever reason, let's say that they didn't experience foster care at those certain ages or they weren't adopted at those certain ages, or uh, maybe they're older than 21, some, whatever's happening there. 
um, we never close the door on anybody. So I always welcome those students to still come in for resources. There may be uh, scholarships we can help them with or maybe some funding sources we can help connect them to or just resources in general. Um, and so I never like to close the door. We're always constantly thinking here about how to engage our population of students on campus who do not fit the criteria for this program because we do know that those students are out there. Um, so definitely never shut the door on them, but in terms of um, definite eligibility criteria, those three that you see on the screen, um, in addition to being admitted to U of M Flint, are going to be the most critical pieces. Kayla, thank you so much for um, explaining that, and I think also hearing your commitment, um, and I imagine it is um, U of M Flint's commitment to really mm -hmm. trying to serve students that may not fall into this eligibility criteria, um, and just for students to know that there is an open door. You know, so many students, um, you know, that are older than 21 may just need a little bit of uh, kind of navigation support, right? Who do exactly. I go to talk about what, you know? Mm -hmm. And so knowing that they can come in, they can um, connect with you, have those conversations, um, and probably learn about resources that they weren't even avail or that they weren't even aware of, um, really can make a, a huge difference in, um, you know, a student's success. And so, and especially a school where um, a larger school like U of M Flint, where students are navigating, um, you know, a larger campus and um, an urban campus, and so sometimes they know it can be a little bit confusing just to even find the buildings that you're looking for. So knowing that you all are there is is very, very helpful. Um, let's see here. I also wanted to talk about um, one, that once students are admitted, that you'll be able to um, that you'll be able to support them, um, even though they may not have uh, started the, uh, on the actual campus, but they are transitioning into um, the college, and that they're and you're able to help them transition into the college. Uh, that is a, a great resource, and I think something that you know many people probably don't necessarily think about is that transition from senior year into um, into college is just such a critical space of transition. And so knowing that you all are there, just that, that's a, a great benefit. So thank you for highlighting that. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to share some of the Empowering My Success program highlights. And I'm going to just do a quick humble brag and say that the work that you all do is, is really phenomenal. I mean, you span work from um, within your campus support program from advocacy and connecting with elected officials to um, community engagement um, to partnership with other campus support programs. So I hope I didn't um, scoop you on anything that you were going to highlight. But no. I <laughs> just had to get that in there and say, uh, you guys just do such fantastic work, and um, I so I look forward to hearing what else you want to share about program highlights. Yeah, thanks, Maddie. We I threw a few pictures up here um, and wanted to share them with everybody just to highlight some of the bigger events, especially from last school year. Um, actually, the very first picture you'll see at the top left, that's from our end of the year event with our students. Um, we went rock climbing and did some additional team building activities with them um, and kind of celebrated their end of the school year, kind of made it through um, another year. Um, we really wanted to make sure to highlight that and to provide them with some of that support through a, a day of fun, but also a day of team building and togetherness. Um, the picture in the middle there is actually from our mentor matching event at the beginning of the year. And that's one thing we really, um, our program really has going for it is the quality of our mentors. We have mentors that are all either U of M Flint faculty or staff on campus that are committed to this program. They go through extensive training to be involved, and they're really committed to the students and their development. So what we did last year is just went through kind of a, um, almost like I call it like speed dating in a way, um, and just had a couple minutes where each student was able to talk to all of our potential mentors and then give us a, a rundown of who they would most likely want to be matched with. So we could definitely incorporate their opinions and views into that matching process. That's something that we're always constantly striving to do is making sure that we're hearing from the experts because I don't feel like it would be as strong of a connection if that student didn't already want to be with that mentor and had a chance to meet them. So we always try to do that and give our students the opportunity to put as much input as they can into what we do here. Um, one of the other things that we do is we try to expose our students to different events or trips or experiences and that picture on the far right is um, one of our students from our previous 
excuse me, our previous school year um, with Tahir Whitehead from the Detroit Lions at an event in Detroit, um, a benefit dinner held to um, to raise funds for the Fostering Future Scholarship. So that was a really wonderful opportunity for her to meet other youth who've experienced foster care that are now in the college um, you know, world, they're at a university, they're experiencing those things, and also to meet other supportive professionals and see that there is a large support system out there for youth who've experienced care and who are now transitioning into higher education. Um, the other picture down the bottom left, that's also from our end of the year event. Um, I love this picture because we have two students in that picture. On the far left, we have a mentor, and on the far right, we have our vice chancellor um, for student inclusion. And she is a wonderful champion for us. And I think that picture really speaks to the various levels of support that our program has at the university. And that's definitely a highlight of our program. We really pride ourselves on um, having that multi-level support from um, the highest levels at the university to all the way through each level um, and each position. Everyone knows about us um, and is willing to support us and even come out on Saturdays and play team building games with us. <laughs> so it's really, nice. really wonderful to have everything from, um, you know, the really formal business side of things to that really um, empathic and really, um, you know, personal touch to that relationship. And then as you mentioned, Maddie, we do also try to work with, um, do some advocacy for our students and also do advocacy in the community on behalf of our students and for our students. And we work closely with Dan Kildee, um, who you can see in that picture at the bottom right at our Community Champions event that we host. So he can share some updates, legislative um, updates from the state and federal level about how things are going for youth, uh, for youth who've experienced foster care. Is there new developments? Are there things that we should be looking out for? Is there ways we can advocate, et cetera? And it's a great time for our students, again, to be exposed to that and to be able to know that he's so open to, um, you know, connecting with them and hearing their voice and story. So those are a lot of our highlights. Um, I know it's only five pictures, but we've done so much. Um, and um, those are just some of the, the bigger ones that have happened throughout the year. Thank you so much for sharing, Kayla. I love it. And, mm -hmm. you know, what I think it really speaks to is how, um, Empowering My Success is really so well integrated into the community, into the campus, and um, really into the state and national landscape, you know, so you're kind of covering mm -hmm. all of those areas, and that with the program being really integrated into those spaces, then students have access to um, building their social network, building um, their connections, you know, as far as potential future career connections, and just having more supportive adults that they have access to as they are making their way through post-secondary in education into professional careers. So um, yeah. I love seeing all these pictures and, and thinking about how well and how holistically sub students are supported through your program. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that. Yeah. The next slide that we have is um, really to kind of expand beyond just what um, amazing things you just shared as far as <laughs> highlights with um, Empowering My Success, but what are some things that are special about the University of Michigan Flint? What things should we know and, and should students and supportive adults and professionals know about the opportunities there? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the next piece of it, right? You have this great program, but you have to, you have to have a great school to interest everybody to come. And so I'm so happy that we do have that. U of M Flint's a wonderful place to be. Um, we're a four-year university, public university, um, with over 100 different academic programs and majors offered. So really, there's a, such a wide variety of things that students come to our campus for um, in terms of majors and interests. And we have the majority of those really popular and um, more, um, you know, more more desirable degrees that people are looking to achieve. Um, the one thing I really highlight when I talk about U of M Flint is definitely the location and the character of the university. So we're located right in the heart of downtown Flint. So we're really in the middle of it all in terms of the development, in terms of the um, community connections that we have, and we really are a part of the city. Um, so it's not a, it's not removed from the city. We don't we don't strive to be separate from the city. 
city in any way, shape, or form. We really take a lot of pride in being an integral piece of the community. Um, the other thing that I really like in terms of the character about U of M Flint is that despite any challenges that may arise, whether it might be something specifically with the, with the city, whether it's something within the university, anything that might happen, there's a certain grit about U of M Flint where we lean into a lot of those challenges and we push through and we, we kind of shift the focus and the mindset from more of a deficit to a let's see what we can learn and how we can grow out of this. And I think that's really at the heart of U of M Flint. Um, we're also really, really committed since we are in the middle of the, uh, of the city and such a critical piece to um, community engagement. So sometimes it gets a little bit blurry where the campus stops and the community starts because we have so many events where we're inviting the community in or the community is invite, inviting us out and you're constantly seeing that U of M Flint connection through all the service providers and um, you know from big to small throughout the city we're connected to them in some way shape or form which is really helpful coming back to empowering because then we have those connections throughout the community multiple of some of our closest champions throughout the community are just blocks away we can walk there and it's so great to have that right in our backyard to help our students and also to help develop our program um, we're mainly a commuter school, but as of um, the past few years or so, we did have two residential halls um, open up on campus. So most of our program participants do stay on campus and enjoy it. Um, our housing is some of the best at, some, at the universities throughout the state considering how new it is. Um, so a lot of our students enjoy that and choose to live there, but we are still mainly a commuter campus. So the community and the university itself does quite a bit of um, you know, activities on campus and has a lot of really engaging things going on to help draw those commuter students in. And that's even better for our students that live on campus because they're already living right in the heart of it. So they have access to all of these events and activities, fun things, serious things, whatever you want type of things right here in their backyard. Wow, I, you know, even knowing that I've been to the University of Michigan Flint um, many times over the last, you know, five or so years um, and having, you know, explored some of the different uh, areas of campus, I had no idea really how interconnected uh, the campus is with the community, which makes sense, mm -hmm. you know, just especially given the location, um, really being in, uh, right in Flint um, and kind of in the city center uh, and, and hearing the, the different ways that the campus is engaging with the community. And I really love what you said about um, U of M Flint being an institution that leans in, um, you know, with with grit to address some of the issues that that arise in the community. And I think it speaks to the level of resilience that you see mm -hmm. um, within the the larger U of M Flint community that really I think is echoed through the Empowering My Success program. Um, Absolutely. You know, and I think hearing for students that may be uh, not sure if they want to, like, live on campus or, or maybe they're not sure what that would look like, that there's options. You know, they could be a commuter. Um, they could mm -hmm. live in the community. They have that flexibility. And so it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility for students to really carve out their own University of Michigan Flint experience and really make it um, the best experience for them, which I think probably increases the likelihood of, you know, a student's individual success. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. I think it's it's really great to know, and I would encourage folks to go and visit and see um, and just ex just get the feel of the campus community. So we do have on the screen now um, just some highlights about tuition fees and cost of attendance. Um, you know, sometimes this can be a little overwhelming for folks uh, to look at to really understand, kind of wrap their head around. And I'm wondering if you can kind of help understand when we talk about total cost of attendance, um, what students maybe um, should be expecting as far as the amount of money that uh, they should be expecting to pay, but also the amount of support, scholarship support, grant support that might be available um, at U of M Flint, uh, particularly for students with experience in foster care. Yes, absolutely. And I was thinking about this, especially when you had mentioned that asterisk for financial resources, because I do know that we all vary significantly and I'm, we're very fortunate in empowering my success to have the relationships that we do so that we can provide so much financial support for students. So, mm -hmm. um, so everything that you're looking at on the screen, yes, is, is correct. That's generally what students can expect. Of course, if you're taking more or less than 12 credits, that number is going to adjust and so on and so forth. Um, but as a part of the Empowering My Success program, the very first thing that we're going to be doing 
doing out the gate in terms of financial support is hooking students up with ETV partnerships. You know, do you have your ETV apps filled out? Do you have Fostering Future scholarships applied for? Are you getting that money? Making sure that they're getting all the money through those scholarships, maybe university scholarships or merit scholarships that they're rightly entitled to. So we help students fill out those applications, make sure all of the information is correct so that they're able to get that money. The next thing that we do is we work really closely with financial aid. Actually, as of right now, Empowering My Success, our offices currently sit within the financial aid office. So not only are we close to financial aid in terms of our working relationship, but we're physically in the office. So we have a lot of connections with them. Um, our director of financial aid, Lori Vetter, has been absolutely wonderful in helping our students. She's a huge campus champion for us. Um, and she sets aside uh, money out of the financial aid budget every year to actually fill the holes in our Empowering My Success students' financial aid packages that aren't covered by things like their grants and scholarships. So really what that ends up meaning is that our students don't pay anything. So that's pretty, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, program to be a part of for that reason. You don't have to worry about taking out loans unless there's some, you know, extenuating circumstance that comes up. If we're just looking at a standard package, our students are going to be covered. I also like to point out to students that if, you choose to, if they choose to live on campus, that housing fee, in addition to all the other mandatory fees that you see on your screen, is actually going to be rolled into their financial aid package, which therefore means that that will be supplemented by the, um, by the grants that our financial aid office gives out to cover our students' um, gaps that they have. So in a sense, your housing is covered as well during the fall and winter semesters, which is huge. Um, we get that question a lot, how much am I going to owe? How much is this going to be? Well, really it's not going to cost you anything out of pocket, which is really, really awesome. That's fantastic, and I think such a, a helpful breakdown to understand um, not only what the fees are, what, what the different um, costs are, but also what the resources that students who are connected through Empowering My Success have to navigate those, um, those fees and costs. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've always loved that you guys have such a close partnership with financial aid because I think it breaks down a lot of barriers. It allows for yeah. clear communication, and it also help students see that financial aid, you know, they're, they're nice people. Um, you know, sometimes <laughs> I think uh, it gets overwhelming when you're going for those first couple times to a financial aid office and wondering, yeah. you know, what should I share? What do I need to share? What do they know? What don't they know? Um, and I think having you all uh, so well connected with financial aid it just takes a huge barrier, um, just even in the minds for students and for um, professionals and supportive adults, it just takes that barrier out of the way. Um, it's great to hear that, you know, again, with your ability to support students once um, they are accepted to the university, that you're able to do some of that, those applications that are due before students even set foot on campus. So, mm -hmm. you know, ETV, Fostering Futures, um, knowing that they can come to you and ask for help and make sure that they are doing all of those things that we want to um, make sure that they apply for. Uh, yeah. And then the, I think just always, I always want to underscore because I think this is such a great commitment that most of the campus-based support programs um, in our state have and are actually really able to, to meet that students leave with low or no debt. Um, yeah. And that it sounds like from U of M Flint, there's actually some uh, financial resources institutionally that um, are earmarked to support that, to help make that happen as much as possible. And for students with experience in foster care, the ability to leave with low or no debt that, you know, it really is a game changer. So I, I mm -hmm. really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and I, I meant to mention too, Maddie, in addition to some of those financial resources, um, which is absolutely by far the number one question we get is how much is this going to cost mm -hmm. me? We also take care of, again, through a partnership with Financial Aid, we provide each of our students with a $500 book scholarship at the beginning of the fall and winter semester. So oh, wow. even though the cost of books isn't necessarily worked into the financial aid package, we kind of have a safety net in that scholarship for each of our students. And given that most of our students are going to be freshmen or sophomore, considering the age limitations, that generally will be enough to cover all of their books. So that's also another really wonderful piece. Yeah, that that's such an amazing resource, and I one that I actually didn't even know about. Um, yeah. Books are so expensive. <laughs> you know, they are. <laughs> they're one of those things that when students start, you know, and they're registered and everything seems like it's paid for, and then you get your list of books, all of mm -hmm. a sudden you go, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay for all of these books? And 
what yeah. I've ever seen a book that costs over a hundred dollars, <laughs> you know, until you go to college. So that's just a wonderful resource and something mm -hmm. that, you know, I hope everybody, um, you know, kind of earmarks and goes, oh, I need to make sure that we follow up on that because that's a great benefit um, for participants in the Empowering My Success program. Mm -hmm. So my last question for you, and this is, you know, normally where we would talk about a humble brag, something that we always like, like to ask our, our partners and collaborators about, um, you know, just to share those good things, those um, highlights, things that we might not hear about or know about, but that um, we want to get out there so people, um, you know, know that there are good things happening, special things happening everywhere. And so um, for you, we would love to hear three things that we should know about the about U of M at U of M Flint and the Empowering My Success program. Yes, definitely. So one of them I've already kind of touched on a little bit, but it's something that I personally appreciate and I know, uh, you know, as a larger program we appreciate as well, is that just the mission of the University of Michigan Flint is solely, it's just rooted in dedicating um, time and resources to serving some of the most diverse and unique populations of college-going students that come to our campus, including youth who've experienced foster care. So there's such an intrinsic, um, you know, desire at the university and a mission at the university to make sure to serve of those students that typically would maybe be overlooked or maybe there would be some challenges for those students. We want to address that. We know that we're in an urban environment. We know, in, we know we're in an environment where a lot of students don't go to college or don't have the means to go to college. And so we definitely take that into account. Again, it's kind of part of our location um, and it's part of our mission to serve those students. So because of this, Empowering My Success has really strong institutional and community support, which ultimately ends up in benefits for our students and more opportunities um, and things of that nature for any of our participants. So that's definitely a big one. Um, the other thing I also wanted to mention too, again, um, Empowering My Success has a strong, strong partnership with our Office of Financial Aid. And I did touch on that. Um, but I think it's wonderful because it goes beyond the requirements. And I think that's the great thing about our relationship. We aren't required through our grant to have a wonderful relationship with financial aid. We're not required for them, you know, they're not required to do this. They're doing this out of the kindness of their hearts and because they can and know that it's the right thing to do to provide resources to these students. And so that is such an amazing, amazing thing. In fact, um, you know, we, we talk about it annually and always double check on the budget, but if the budget allows, um, typically our students once they age out of our program the financial aid office is willing to cover the uh, next semester that the student is in as well to help them with their transition out of the program and wow. so it's an amazing right it's an amazing wonderful partnership that is truly truly um, it speaks to the character I think of the people that work at this university and how much they care about these students and seeing them succeed no matter what that looks like um, the other thing too, I guess I kind of have two more, but one of the things I wanted to point out is that in our most recent survey of uh, former program participants, we had 100% of those former participants saying that they would recommend our program to students who have experienced foster care and are now coming to the university. So we're really proud of that. We're proud that our alumni base, even though we're still growing, is so strong of an advocate for us because that's where it really matters. I could talk all day, but if people listen to the stories of the students that have been in the program, that makes more of an impact. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, and then the last small thing I'll mention as my number four is that in terms of program development, we're constantly thinking about this. Um, myself and Tynesha, the administrative, administrative uh, assistant for the program, we are the only two full-time staff, really the only staff, two staff members solely dedicated to working on this program full-time. So we're constantly thinking about ways to improve, um, looking for suggestions, and one of the big things that we're doing is partnering with the U of M Flint School of Social Work to provide a field placement opportunity for U of M Flint uh, senior social work students. So that's going to be a really awesome component to have um, a learning environment to where students can learn more about this population, these students, and also get some experience. And our students can benefit from that knowledge that our interns bring as well. So there's my four. I know I was supposed to do three, but there was just too much good stuff. <laughs> there is so much good stuff, and, and I, I, you know, I appreciate a maximizer. So. <laughs> Uh, if you can fit in four, absolutely fit in four. Um, right, right. Really, you know, there's so, there, like I said, there's so much good stuff, and I think there's just a, an incredible amount of support that is available for students um, through Empowering My Success, through U of M Flint. You know, I was taking notes because I know some of those things I actually hadn't heard before. You know, the yeah. 
with financial aid um, to to try to do this continued support for um, one term after a student ages out of empowering my success is a great benefit just supporting mm -hmm. that transition for students um, and then the 100% recommendation from uh, students who have been participants in the program in the past you know you kind of can't ask for a better endorsement than students right. who are engaged in your program and so um, that's just a great thing to know and I hope that um, folks that are listening really take that to heart that students who have been engaged um, and that U of M Flint has been working um, you know providing support for students for five years now and so that's mm -hmm. a whole lot of students who can really attest to the benefits that they've received through empowering my success so um, you all should feel very proud about that and um, I hope that others who are listening um, definitely kind of take that to heart and really think about um, what that means for future students and how incredible their opportunities uh, at U of M Flint and with Empowering My Success really are. Mm -hmm. So Kayla, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, as always, it's just great to talk with you and um, to hear about what's going on at U of M Flint and with the Empowering My Success program. For everybody who's listening, I just want to remind you, um, you can reach out to Kayla directly. Her email is on the screen. Her phone uh, number is on the screen. Uh, we know that there's lots of individual questions, lots of individual circumstances, and so we always want folks to be sure to have that direct conversation contact um, and as you can imagine there's lots of other people uh, at U of M Flint who are ready and excited to support students who are interested and seeking to attend U of M Flint and engage in the Empowering My Success program. Uh, last thing that I will point out is that we do have a number of resources available through Fostering Success Michigan. Um, of course, we have our Getting to Know Higher Education Resources guide. Uh, this guide is available on the fosteringsuccessmichigan.com website along with a host of other resources. Uh, we also are very social, and so if you're wondering what's going on, looking to kind of stay engaged, uh, both Fostering Success Michigan and the Fostering Success Michigan Higher Education Consortium are um, um, online on Facebook. Uh, Fostering Success Michigan is also on Twitter and Instagram. Um, these are great ways just to kind of know what's going on, stay connected to the community, um, and through the uh, Facebook pages of our programs and the Higher Education Consortium, it really gives folks an idea of what it's like to be engaged in these programs um, and kind of put some faces to names. Um, so with that, I will just say be sure to follow up with any other questions regarding U of M Flint and Empowering My Success with Kayla. We will look forward to hearing great things from future students at U of M Flint. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Thank you.